So let's continue on with our proof here. So we have our epsilon that is equal to a half of the minimum of the distances between your proposed limit point and all of the known limit points. And I've explained that our strategy in this proof is going to be that if we put an epsilon interval around this proposed limit point L, the way that we have chosen this epsilon means that none of the epsilon intervals around all of the known limit points will overlap with this epsilon interval around this proposed limit point L. And then what we're going to do is we're going to now say, because these subsequences all converge to these limit points, then by the definition of convergence, there must be eventually a point where all of the terms of the sequence are inside these epsilon intervals around these limit points, or the subsequences rather. So all of these subsequences are going to go into their respective epsilon intervals eventually, and then we're going to argue therefore that there must be a point in the overall sequence where every single thing after that is in one of these epsilon intervals around the known limit points, and therefore because they don't overlap with this epsilon interval around L, they are not inside the epsilon interval around L, and that will be how we show that there cannot possibly be a subsequence therefore that that converges to this proposed limit point L, and hence it's not a limit point. So let's do this. So we take our epsilon then, and we say, because this subsequence converges to L1, there will exist some term in this subsequence, some big K, which I'll call big K1, because we're going to have one for each of these uh, subsequences, such that for that term, that big K1 term, and all terms after it, they are all inside the epsilon interval around L1. Similarly, I can do this for the second subsequence, and I'll call its term where that occurs big K2, and so on. For the nth subsequence, I will call it big K sub n. Now, if you look at all these terms in the subsequences, they will have corresponding terms back in the original sequence. So if I go to the k1th term of this first subsequence, I plug that into this function m1, so I look at what is m1 of k1, the a m1 k1, that is the entry from this original sequence that is in that k1th term. So this k1th term of the subsequence is actually the m1 k1th term of the original sequence. Similarly, the k 2 term in this subsequence, that is the n2 of k2 of term in the original subsequence. So what I'm doing is I'm putting all of these big k's into their respective subsequence functions here and getting what term they correspond to in the original sequence. Now, what I want to do, remember, is find a point in the original sequence, a big N if you like, such that that term and all terms beyond it are inside one of these epsilon intervals around the known limit points. What I know is that if you go to this term of the sequence and you look at all the terms beyond it that are in the first subsequence, they are inside the epsilon interval around L1. I also know that if I go to this term of this sequence, and look at all the terms that are beyond it that are in the second subsequence, they are all inside the epsilon interval around L2. The problem with these is that all it guarantees is that that term and all the terms beyond it that are in its respective subsequence are where I want them to be. It doesn't guarantee that all the things after it that are in other subsequences are, are right. So how am I going to get around this? Hopefully your brain is ticking and you've got the idea. We can just look at these. There's finitely many of them. There's m of them, after all. And if you just go to the maximum one, the last one, they're all in order. So you, you go through them, see where they are in this sequence, and just go to the last one. If you go to that one, then all the other ones are in front of it. And therefore, if you look at that term and all terms beyond it, it must be the case that every single term is in one of these epsilon intervals around the limit points, because that was the last one. All of the other ones are in front of it. Uh, I'm going to draw a picture to illustrate this. 
So what I am claiming here is that the magical big N that I need is actually the maximum of these things. So N1, K1, N2, K2, all the way up to N, M, K, N. If you put all of those into a set, and there's finitely many of them, and take the maximum one, the biggest one, they're all natural numbers, take which one of them is the biggest, so that's a well-defined concept. I claim that that is the magic big N that I need, such that if you go to this big Nth term, it and all the terms beyond it satisfy what I need them to satisfy, which is that they are inside these epsilon intervals around one of the known limit points. And the justification for that is, I hope, demonstrated in this picture here. So here's my sequence, A1, A2, A3. And then if I go far enough along, I, I will get to a term that is one of these number terms. So I've, it might not be the first one, for example. This might not actually be the smallest one. Um, there's no reason that it has to be the smallest one. It's just the one that's been given numbered as number one, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the case that this one, this first subsequence, converges to uh, L1 quickest or gets within this epsilon distance of L1 quickest compared to the others. That doesn't have to be the case. Um, so to, it, it might be, for instance, that N2K2 is the first term that you actually get to of these N uh, num possible numbers. What that says if, is if you look at that this term and all the terms that are beyond it that are in the second subsequence, they are all inside this, but it doesn't tell you about all the other terms that are in the different subsequences. Then we go on and we get to the other ones. So here, for example, is a n3 k3 in our picture. So now, from this point onwards, it is the case that everything that is in the third sequence is within epsilon of L3, but also actually from this point onwards, you also know, because it's to the right of this one, that from here, everything that is in the second and the third subsequence are in their correct bits. And actually, as you go further on, if you go to this one, whichever one this one is, now you know that from that point onwards, everything that is in all three of these subsequences is within epsilon of their respective limit points. And that's why you just need to go to the final one. If you get to the final one, then from that point onwards, all of them are going to be inside these epsilon intervals of their limit points. So that's why big N is going to be the maximum of which are, of all of these M numbers. So from this point onwards, all of the terms here will be inside one of these epsilon intervals around these m limit points. And that's a problem because we set this up so that the epsilon interval around our proposed limit point l does not overlap with any of these. So now I know that if I go to this term in the sequence, everything beyond that is not inside this epsilon interval around l. And now that means that l cannot possibly be a limit point of our sequence, because if it was, it would mean that there was a subsequence of this sequence that converges to that value L. But that can't be the case because any subsequence is going to have to contain things from the tail end of this sequence here. After all, there's only a finite number of terms of the sequence ahead of this. The infinite part of the sequence is this tail end. So if you construct a subsequence, yes, it might contain some of these from this finite part, but then it's going to have to contain an infinite number from this tail end. If that subsequence was converging to L, it would have to obey the epsilon definition of convergence to L. And therefore, for this epsilon here, there would have to be a point in that subsequence where from that point and all points onwards, they're inside this epsilon interval. Well, that's never going to be the case because all of this tail here that you're picking the tail end of your subsequence from isn't inside that epsilon interval. So you can't possibly produce a subsequence of this sequence that converges to that value L. Hence, L cannot be a limit point. So that's the strategy for proving that if you have a bunch of subsequences that partition your overall sequence, and these subsequences, they converge and you have their limits, then that collection of limits of those subsequences, that is your complete collection of limit points for your overall sequence. This is how you would go about proving that nothing else can be a limit point. So with that, we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.